Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering another Irish whiskey. As of the time of release, this is the day after St. Patrick's Day, so it seems a good opportunity to cover some more Irish whiskey. I'm going to be doing a lot more Irish whiskey this year because it's been kind of neglected on the channel. So I'm going to drop a playlist up here to all my other Irish whiskey. So if you are interested in such things, then uh, go and check it out. Today, we've got the Writer's Tears Copper Pot. Now, this is an interesting one because they started out, the company that uh, make Writer's Tears, which is the Walsh Whiskey, they started out as a husband and wife duo and a company that makes kind of liqueurs and things to make Irish whiskies. And they kind of, that's expanded and expanded and expanded from their kind of 1999 start to eventually making some whiskey. Now this Writer's Tears was originally released in 2009, obviously right now we're in 2019, so around 10 years. But really interesting about it is they now have their own distillery, which was opened in 2016. So this particular whiskey I'm holding in my hand, I absolutely 100% can guarantee was not made there because I've had this little sample for a couple of years now. So legally, that hasn't been made at their distillery. I'm sure eventually they'll make stuff at uh, their distillery and it'll be in the writer's tears thing. So I don't actually know where this was produced. The distillery they've got now as well has got a copper pot still, as you would expect, as well as a column still. It's a pretty standard affair. So this thing here itself, writer's tears, was named after uh, the Irish writers and playwrights from the 19th century who found their solace and inspiration in the bottom of a bottle at their local pub. This actual whiskey itself is a vatting of pot still Irish whiskey, single pot still Irish whiskey, and single malt whiskey. Now, it's a bit of a, an interesting kind of term that one is because if you think about Scotch whiskey, now most people watching this will be into their Scotch and they'll know that most single malt whiskey is made in a pot still. So a batch process, chuck it all in, what comes out the other end, waste, etc. So it's the same in Irish whiskey, it's the same, but they call single malt whiskey is stuff that's literally just malted barley, but their single pot still whiskey is uh, an inflection on that, and that includes green or unmalted barley as well, which is an interesting thing, because we don't do that in Scotland. Don't do that in Scotland. They vatted that together, and it's created this kind of blend from within, I guess, a single distillery, but you can't really be sure. You can't really be sure. Well, let's stop talking about it and move on to the actual nose itself and see kind of what we've got going here. I should say as well, it's a 40 percenter. They do do higher ABVs, but they are kind of annual special releases at cask strength. There's not really one in between. So those things are very limited and sell out very quickly, or you have this for about 30 to 35 pounds in the UK. Now on the nose, it's a, a pretty typical smelling whiskey, to be honest. Nothing too, uh, nothing too stand out. It's, it's apple -y, it's got honey, it's vanillas, it's ex-bourbon matured, so things you would expect. For me, I would wager in a blind tasting, I might try and say this was a space side. That kind of indicative, kind of orchard, tree, apple -y notes you're getting. Hmm. Let's try on the palette. Hmm. So, initially, very, very initially, it feels almost kind of watery, but that uh, kind of gives away pretty quickly to some really kind of light, spicy flavours. And it's got this kind of, this weird flavour that took me a while to put my, my finger on, but in the end I decided on a kind of butterscotchy. So it's not really like, it's not toffee, it's not caramel, it's got that kind of hard candy butterscotch flavour to it. Very interesting, very interesting. Mm. The finish is kind of medium long. It's not, it's not huge, it's not huge, but it leaves this really nice kind of spicy, fruity flavour on the tongue. I would say it's, a, for want of a better word, it's quite an elegant dram. It's quite a subtle dram. Extremely easy drinking. It's kind of what you would expect from a triple distilled Irish whiskey. You know, most Irish whiskies are in the same sort of category, just like space eyes are. You know, they're in that kind of they 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 taste very similar to each other around that area. An Irish whiskey is no exception. You know, when you triple distill, you're getting only the lightest flavours out. 
So really the only thing that can make any difference to what your whiskey is is how you mature it or what you start to do with it a bit later on and the uh, ABV, bottle strength, things like that. I would say this is a pretty typical Irish whiskey, very light, very subtle, uh, but that kind of makes it really nice, easy drinking thing. If you're into your kind of huge, big peat flavours, you're not going to find any of that here. So you may be a little bit disappointed, but if you're into one of those whiskies that's just kind of, you know, it's not in your face, it's just nice and easy to drink, you know, maybe in the winter next to a fire or something like that, it's just, just nice and casual, I think. It's probably a good way of saying it. Nice casual whiskey, maybe even an entry level whiskey for newcomers to whiskey in general. You know, if you're not sure what to give somebody, you need something really not nice and light that isn't going to blow someone's head off. And I think Irish whiskey in this is a good place to start. All right. They started out as a kind of, um, well, so it's a pretty cool name, pretty cool name. I like it. Um, that kind of indicative sherry. Um, but um, I would say this is a pretty atypical 